Today, we're going to look at a feature in Outlook called Board View. This feature allows you to create a customized board to replace your calendar view. Rather than bouncing from one screen to another, you can keep your calendar, files, notes, and more all in one view. To get started, go to Outlook and select the calendar icon in the menu on the left-hand side of the screen. The default view for my calendar is a week view. If you navigate to the right-hand side of the screen and select the drop-down arrow next to week, you will see the option for board. When the board first opens, it will have a calendar, the My Day view, tasks, and tips. The tips are useful to help you get started with the board view. One of the things that I found useful is see shortcut keys. I recently did a video on shortcut keys, so you know that I'm a big fan. These are just a few more that you can add to your toolbox. Once you are done looking at all the tips, you can remove them from your board. Click on the three dots and select Remove from Board. Now the board view is very similar to Whiteboard and Teams in the fact that you can hold your mouse down and pan around on the board to make it as large or small as you need it to be. The items that we have left on the board can be moved around and placed in any order that you want. So I'm going to grab tasks and move it to the right and create a little bit of space so that I can add things to the left of my calendar. If you go to the toolbar at the top of the screen, you can click the drop down next to add to board and add additional items to your board. Click on show all to see all of the options. The first thing that I would do is add a clock to my board because I work with people in multiple time zones. This helps me to know when it's too early or too late to call a colleague. Now that I have my three clocks, I might want to group them together. I can click Add to Board and select Collection. Then what I can do is rename it. So in this case, I'm going to call it Time Zones. Once I do that, I can drag and drop all of the different clocks into the collection to keep them grouped together. Another option you have to customize your board is to assign the individual components a color. Click on the three dots for the clock and select Change Color. In this case, I'm going to have Seattle be green and then I will change the colors for the other time zones as well. I can also color code the collection itself and this quickly draws my attention to information that I need to keep track of. The next option I will show you is how to add weather to your board. This would have been a nice choice for me when I was still traveling for a living and needed to know how to pack. All you have to do is enter the zip code for the location that you want weather, click enter, and you'll see the forecast on your board. Another useful option is to add goals to your board. Now you can use these to keep track of specific tasks and assign due dates, or they can just be generic goals that you want to add to your calendar. In this case, I'm going to set myself a target for creating a OneDrive class, and then I'm going to give myself till the end of the week to get started with it. And when you assign a date, it's going to show up at the top of your calendar to help you easily keep track of your different goals. Now let's add a file to our board. Click Add to Board and select File. Another window will appear and you can choose your files from OneDrive or you can choose a file from Groups. In this case, I'm going to select a file from OneDrive, which is my Training Ideas Excel file. You might be thinking, why would I add a file to my board anyway? I can always go to OneDrive or Teams to look for them. I just find it easier to have the files that I use most often all in one place. Let's switch focus for a moment and look at the task section that was automatically included when we first opened the board. You can click on the add a task section and add one directly to your board. If you're already using to do, those tasks will automatically appear here in the task section as well. The calendar that you see on the board view works the same way as it would if you were interacting with it in a traditional view. You can click on new event to add an item to your calendar, or you can just select the time that you want and the details pane will appear. 
then you will fill out the meeting invite like you normally would. And I'll still have access to all of the features that I like to use, such as categorizing my meetings by color code. Once you have everything set up the way you want, you have the option to lock your board. This prevents the board from moving or from zooming in and out. So when I click on lock the board, I can still scroll within the calendar itself, but I can't select the calendar and move it to another place on the board. To do that, I would need to go back to unlock the board. As with many of the features that I demonstrate, there's not a wrong or right answer. It's just a matter of personal preference. I personally keep my board unlocked because I have a lot of things on it and I like to be able to move around. Now let's take a look at board settings and rename the board. Instead of it being called default, I want to call it Heather's board. And the reason I want to do that is because you can have more than one board view. On the left hand side of the screen, click the drop down for board and then select new board. I will give the board a name such as training team and then I will click on create. Now I have a brand new board that has all of the default elements that we started with at the beginning of this video. By default, this new board is going to track my personal calendar, but what I really want is to track the training team calendar. So I will select that and deselect my calendar. And now I have a second board view that shows just the events that are applicable to the training team. If I want to get back to my personal calendar, I will select the drop down arrow next to training team, go to the arrow next to board, and put a check mark next to Heather's board. And I'm back at the original view that we have customized. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please give it a like. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.